Ah, Robin, what amazing brownies. Yeah. How do you cook these, man? <laughs> cook? <laughs> you don't cook brownies, you bake them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you bake brownies. But um, yeah, with uh, baking, I've always uh, very passionate about it. I think ever since I was a kid, I always found myself in the kitchen trying to understand what my mom's making every time I found some free time. But uh, it is something I'm very passionate about. I've uh, made a few stuff for the for the cake here side as well. And um, you know, it's one of the reasons we're so successful, the secret of my brownies. <laughs> so brownie points and that's why you get to open all the time. Yes, right? <laughs> that's exactly why I get to open all the time. <laughs> So, Robbie, you've always been this aggressive player, walking down the track. You were called walking assassin also, if I'm not mistaken. With this kind of attitude, I'm sure you'd had a lot of problems on the pitch with other cricketers as well, right? Quite a few growing up, yes. <laughs> Especially the Aussies. Yes, I actually had a few incidents with the, uh, with the Aussies. In fact, uh, in 2007, we were playing the World Cup, T20 World Cup, I had an incident with Matthew Hayden. Uh, it's quite a funny one. Um, as I thought it was funny <laughs> because uh, um, when I went in a bat, uh, Matthew Hayden was sledging me a lot. And I took it in my stride, but I'm the kind of guy who takes it in my stride but make sure I give it back when I'm, you know, when I'm fielding. So when he came in a bat, I was giving it to him and he didn't like it. And uh, obviously, he, I was just a youngster getting off the blocks, you know, in international cricket. And he said to me, you know, I've played 11 years of international cricket, you need to respect me. <laughs> so I said to him, uh, hey Doss, uh, you, I think you, you kind of forget something, you know, respect isn't demanded, it's earned. Ooh, and wow, you and took on Matthew <laughs> Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> I think that hit, the, uh, that hit a soft spot with him. Didn't hear a word from him after that. Uh, a couple of hours later, we had someone castle him uh, and get him bold. So, you know, it all works, it's good fun. So another incident that happened was in India. Uh, it was at Simon's actually. So we were playing in Hyderabad and I was batting and then he said to me, Hey, monkey! Hey, monkey! <laughs> I looked at him, I was batting. I looked at him and said, Simo, have you had a look in the mirror lately? <laughs> so, this actually uh, happened. It actually happened. I mean, I was there at Sydney Gate. Yeah. Millions of man hours lost. Yeah. Diplomatic row between two countries and he called you a monkey. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, but you know, you know how it is. You know, we <laughs> we take things in a, in our stride and you know we're we're easy going like that. But I guess not everyone's like us. You know. So let's talk about your batting. Sure. The Robbie in the past, the goon in the crease, versus the calm, composed dominator of today. What is this change in your batting? Yeah. Uh. Well, yeah, I think it's been a very conscious effort to go from walking assassin to standing assassin. <laughs> uh, I'd like that. Uh, I'd like to be called that more than walking assassin right now because uh, uh, I've changed a lot uh, over the last four or five years uh, with the way I approach my cricket, uh, with the way I've, uh, I think I've grown as a person, as a, as a cricketer. I've had to uh, deconstruct my batting completely and reconstruct myself completely and that's been one phenomenal journey, which I'm eternally grateful for. But there must be a turning point. I mean, everybody has a mentor or a coach. Yes. But somebody must have triggered this change in your batting. Because I know whatever little cricket I've played, it's very difficult to change your batting style. Well, yeah, as in, uh, there has been this one person who's been instrumental in, in the whole change, and that's been Praveen Amri. So is, uh, so someone who's uh, helped me deconstruct myself and reconstruct myself. So you just called him randomly? Uh, no, it wasn't random. Uh, we were we were together. I've known Sir from, Sir from the age of 16. Uh, he was one of our selectors when I got selected first time for Junior India. Uh, you know, he's been someone who's who I've known through the years. And uh, Sir, someone I was working with in Pune Warriors as well. And and uh, you know, there's this one game where he, you know, we got really close during 2012 when I was with Pune Warriors. And uh, during this one game, uh, I had this issue with my initial movement, and he said, you know, he may. He asked me to just trust him blindly and said, go with this front foot initial movement. And I went with it without even practicing it in, in, at practice. And uh, uh, I ended up scoring about 40, 50 odd in about 20, 25 balls. And I was very happy. And I just cracked a joke with him saying that, you know, sir, you, you should do this thing that tennis players do. You should become my personal coach. <laughs> and then we had a great laugh about it. But after the IPL, I went for a break and, you know, I, I was traveling Europe and I was in Belgium. I was in a bus stand in Belgium and I 
called him up because I got a lot of time to introspect about you know where I was heading with my cricket and uh, I called him up and I said sir I you know I want to work with you I want you to work with me in my technique and I want to you know rediscover rediscover myself or I want to reconstruct my whole batting and I want to work with you and he said to me robin give me 20 minutes i want to speak to my coach uh, he want to speak to ramakanth achareka sir and uh, you know see if uh, you know he could take this on and he spoke to sir and uh, sir giving gave him his blessing his approval and he said okay take him on so i called him back 20 minutes later and i said okay let's start doing this so uh, we have this notion in india where when you start working with a coach there's you know it's just like your coach is doing you a favor and i didn't want that to be the case because he's going to be adding a lot of value to my life so i said sir uh, uh you know let's let's discuss the financials and he said robin i'll, I'll never forget this he said robin if you give me one rupee guru dakshina that's more than enough wow i said sir that is something i cannot do uh, you're adding value to my life and uh, let's figure something out and we figured whatever financials we had to figure out and 1st of july 2012 that's when i started deconstructing myself and i think the next one year was the most difficult year in my entire life as a person as a human being as a cricketer uh, as a soul it was the most difficult year the toughest year for that whole year the only confidence i had was from what pravin sir said to me so all his words were the, was my confidence it's so much so that i said to sir sir i don't want to play ranji trophy this year i don't want to play first class cricket this year because i don't think i'm ready for it and he said robin trust me you are ready for it your 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 batting your technique and all of that is probably just 40% ready but you are ready for it and that year uh, i ended up being the third highest run scorer for karnataka i wow. scored about 720 runs in just ranji trophy cricket uh, in ranji trophy and uh, went on to get selected to play a side game against australia i top scored uh, the vijay hazare uh, run scoring charts that year for the entire country and was in the top 10 run getters in the ipl and only after that and 5 weeks of training sessions with uh, i had a camp here in bombay and that is the year i 2013 is when i moved from bangalore to bombay I shifted bases i came to bombay rented a house here and i did a 5 week camp with sir only after that i finished that i went back to bangalore the first match i scored a triple 100 in a in an all india tournament against jharkhand and only after that i started getting some self confidence from within myself till then it was all sir and everything that sir said to me Wow. So all my confidence came from sir. But what is clearly emerging from this batting reconstruction deconstruction pattern was that emotionally you were not in the right space sometime during 2012. Oh, Because was... uh, so what was happening? What went what what went wrong or what was going right? I mean, tell us something uh, about that. So it started when I got dropped from the Indian team. I had a lot of personal issues going on uh, within my family and I wasn't feeling good about myself as a cricketer so much so that I began hating myself as a person because I saw myself um as to what where I saw my progress as a person I was so frustrated I was very bitter as a person because I'd grown bitter and because I wasn't aware as to you know that kind of toll that my personal life was taking on me I became grossly overweight uh I saw my progress in cricket in the failure of other people and when i had to actually be honest with myself and look in the mirror and be honest with myself i despised myself and i said i can't go on like this anymore that low i was terrible i was uh, i was i was very, i was in a very strong place to give up cricket and restart my life because i couldn't live with myself as a person and i said and the only person who knew this was my wife uh, back then she was my best friend and and i called her up uh, early 2012 and i said to her sheets uh i think i want to you know restart my life and i said i just hate where i am as a person and uh, i hate the fact that i see my progress as a cricketer in the failure of other people and that's and and i can't live with myself and i can't play cricket like this it doesn't matter how much money i'm earning i think i want to stop i want to give up i want to go to some other part of the world probably some end of the world and restart life again and she said rob i understand but can you for 6 months defer your decision i said why she like remember why you started playing cricket i said yeah uh she like for 6 months because you've done so much just play cricket for the sake of playing cricket for the for for why you started playing cricket she said can you do that can you do that for me i said okay and i thought okay that's one more ipl uh, this was in january so that's one more ipl so okay let me do that and um I decided to to do that and she said okay if we can change one thing about you if you can look in the mirror today and if you can change one thing about you what would what would that be and I said to her 
wow, that's a, a no-brainer. <laughs> I'd like to lose weight. Because uh, I was 20, 26 years old and I looked like I was 40. I was huge, I was losing hair, I, was, I looked sad, my face looked huge and I just wasn't in, in, in the right shape. So she, she said, fine, let's, let's fix that. The next day she took me to her nutritionist, who became my nutritionist. And in a matter of two weeks, I saw a change. Um, you know, I did some blood tests. It was a very holistic approach to losing weight. And uh, I got into it and uh, I started losing weight. I started uh, eating right, drinking right, resting right. And suddenly started see feeling a change within myself, in my physical body. And in three weeks, I started seeing a change in my cricket. I started scoring runs. You know, I started becoming... The change happened. The change began. It, it, it began from within. You know, when you change, you're the first person who sees it. And the last people who see it are the people closest to you. Wow. The but last people who see it are the people closest to you. People who, who are not close to you will see it sooner than the people closest to you. Because people closest to you take you for granted and say that, okay, this is how he is, this is how she is. And they say, okay, it's not going to change so fast, it's not going to change so fast. They're the last people who are going to see how much you've truly changed. So, Sheetal was actually the mentor, in a sense. In a sense, yes. And she, it also helped that she had played tennis in the past. Oh, most definitely. As in the fact that she... As in she was a source of inspiration to me. I remember when I went in for my shoulder surgery um, and I came back, uh, again put on a lot of weight and I started training and she was playing competitive tennis by then. Uh, and she's, she started playing competitive, competitive tennis again after she quit, after her father passed away. Uh, and I started training with her. I said, okay, maybe start starting to train with her will be, will be a good, good place to start from. And I couldn't even keep up with her. And She's someone who's inspired me with her work ethic, with her, with her mind, with how strong her mind is. Uh, she's a source of inspiration that, and she is to this day and she continues to be. Wow. Where did you find her? And I, how did I you propose know. to yeah. her? <laughs> that was God said. No, that was another funny story. I have a lot of funny stories to share. So I, I decided to, to propose to her uh, last year. And, um, you know, I thought, let me plan this around my birthday. And we, we, were, we were together and, and I, I was planning it for a good two months, right? And I planned it right around my birthday. And I said to her that, you know, hey, um, you know, let's, you know, I was getting a break from Ranji, Tro Ranji Trophy. And I said to her, let's get out. You know, let's go out of the country for a break. I said, she's like, okay. Let's, I said, let's celebrate my birthday outside the country. So my birthday was on the 11th of November. And, and uh, it happened to, also incidentally happened to be the Diwali weekend. It was on a weekend. So... So she said, okay, let's do it. So I planned it. I've told all my teammates I'm going to propose to her and all of that. And uh, everyone's wished me good luck and all that. <laughs> I've left, I've packed. And uh, so she surprised me on my birthday. Uh, she took me out for dinner. It was a nice romantic dinner. And then uh, she surprised me. And then after that, uh, we was going to go to the airport straight from the, the, the hotel. So I said, fair enough. And we're looking for my passport and I can't find my passport. Are you serious? I couldn't <laughs> find my passport for the life of it. And I was, I couldn't, I didn't know where it went. I had no idea. And I'd lost my passport. And I had to cancel the trip. I had planned like a full-fledged, no like I was going to propose to her in Maldives. I planned a full-fledged trip where uh, we go to Maldives, we sp spend my birthday with her. You know, the next day I was going to take her on a on a cruise on a yacht and then we stop at a sandbank and then we have dinner, it's a romantic dinner where I go down my knees and I propose to her and all of that. And all that went poof <laughs> when I couldn't find my passport. <laughs> and uh, we came back home and I was like, if I can't take her outside of India, let me take her to some place here in India which is beautiful. And I tried. It's because it was uh, the Diwali weekend, no hotel in India had any reservations. Fortunately for me, and I think for some special reason, uh, the Taj West End, which is a hotel in Bangalore, that had the best suite available. It's called the Tata Suite. So that was available. So I said, I booked it and we went in there. And, uh, you know, the whole, the whole proposal was very spontaneous. We were, we, were hang, we were having a small argument and I said, hey, hang on a second. <laughs> I went into the room, I came back with the ring and I said to her, you know, we're going to be doing this anyway for the rest of our lives. And I went down on my knees, I said what I had to say and I, and I proposed to her and, and she was like, are you sure? <laughs> I was like, sheets, I'm on my knees. She's like, are you sure? And she said, are you sure? Like four times. I was like, baby, if you say, are you sure more than three or four times, generally it's a no. Can you please tell me what your answer is? No, but I think it's a fair question. Yes. Because after what she's done for you, you lose your passport. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. There was that as well. And yeah. uh, So confidence level has to be low. Come on. 
But it was very beautiful, it was very spontaneous and I, very, I learned a very important lesson in my life that day that you can plan as much as you want in your life but the most beautiful things happen when, when it's in the moment, you know, when you live life in the moment and you can never plan the most beautiful things in your life and the things that are meant to be, the things that happen, happen when they're spontaneous, when they happen in the moment, when you live in the moment. So let's talk about something which you're good at as well and that is friendship and your Favorite buddy, I believe, is Irfan Pathan. Yes, he is. To the extent that you guys even planned your marriage within a week's time, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, as in so, <laughs> the discussion was, okay, hey, I'm getting married now. So he's like, yeah, but this is when I'm planning to get married. I said, listen, you're one of the, you're one of the best men in the, ma in the marriage, so please don't get married at the same time with that, so that, you know, you're not here. So I need you to be here, and then so I, and I'll be there as well, so make sure we plan it correctly. And then we discussed it, and he pushed the dates a little ahead. Because I decided my date and I told him that, you know, this is the date that I'm getting married. So he pushed it a little ahead. But we're so close, so much so that, you know, when we, when we were playing together and whenever we were together, we, we consider ourselves as husband and wife. <laughs> and, and that's what people have called us. So Any interesting time, yeah. incidents of husband and wife moments? Too many. Way too many. Way <laughs> Tell too us many. at least one. Yeah. Uh, th there'll, be, there'll be some incidents that even make our wives uncomfortable. <laughs> but uh, uh, we were playing the Asia Cup in Pakistan in 2008. And uh, Yusuf was also there and uh, Irfan used to bug me. Uh, I think I'd, I was sitting out in that game and uh, um, we were batting and he was just bugging me. So every time I went close to food, he'd bug me. And he'd keep teasing me about how I was overweight and he'd keep bugging me, picking on, picking on me, picking on me, picking on me. And then one, that one day I lost the plot <laughs> and I abused him. He just looked at me like, like with a stone cold look. He looked at me like And then he shut down. He didn't talk to me. <laughs> so I was also obsessed. I said, you know, chuck it. I don't want to talk to him today. So the next day I met him in the gym. I said, I said, hey, good morning, bro. And he just looked at me, that stone cold look. And I said, he didn't say anything. I was like, what's wrong with this guy? I said, chuck it. Maybe he's upset. He'll be fine. Or maybe he fought this girlfriend or something. I don't know. I don't care. I don't want to talk to him. And the next day, I met him again. Uh, we were going. Yeah, I met him at the ground. We, we met at the ground and said, hey, bro. And he said, not saying anything. Like. What <laughs> He didn't say anything. He's sitting down like this. He's just not looking at me. He put his, put his iPod on and he's not, not talking to me. So I said, okay, leave him. Maybe he needs a couple of days. And that generally happens sometimes when you find... husband and wife. Yeah, so we just give, you know, we give each other space. And a day later, maybe two days later, I met him in the lift. I said, and this time I was like, okay, I'm not going to go in, you know, son. I'm not going to go into him and talk to him, give in and all that. So I said, okay, let me, if, if I ever bump into him, I'll say hi and just, you know, be formal. Mm. So I bumped into him in the lift and um, sure enough, <clears throat> I said, morning. I didn't even say bro or anything, I said <laughs> morning. And then he didn't say anything. Then I was like, I just kept quiet, the lift was going down to the gym. I turned to him and said, what is your problem? <laughs> like, what is your problem in life? And then he burst out laughing. So I'm like, what are you laughing about? He's like, no, I was just pulling your leg. I said, for four days? <laughs> Who does that crap? For four days you pull my leg? Oh God, that's too uh, funny. So, and then he, and then he, you know, and then he says it's your fault. So the guy teases me, and then I lose my, I lose my, I lose the plot, and I obviously abuse him. And then he says, oh, it's your fault. You abuse me, so I'm, uh, so I didn't talk to you. And then we fought about that again, and eventually I said, okay, leave it. Okay, it's my fault. <laughs> my fault. I'm at fault. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, because I checked with him about this story. He said yeah, I it heard. was Robin's fault. <laughs> yeah, I heard. <laughs> I heard he says But that. one thing he says about you is that one of the things that uh, is amazing about uh, Robin Uttapai is the fact that when he starts laughing, it's a very infectious laughter. That can be very embarrassing at times. Uh, <laughs> infectious is a good thing, but uh, not, when, not when it's embarrassing for me and people around me. I had this incident that happened to me uh, when I was with a friend of mine. So, I don't know, if, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll, you'll know Shika Tandich, she used to be a former Olympic athlete. Uh, so, we went out for a movie, we went out to see Pink Panther. And um, so I was sitting here. In fact, she invited me for the movie. I was sitting here. Sit, Shrika was sitting next to me, and a bunch of friends passed us. And there was a, a girl and her mother sitting next uh, next to me on my right. <clears throat> and I was letting it rip. <laughs> that movie is hilarious. And I was laughing my head off. And uh, I just got this weird vibe from this girl. And I said to Shrika during the in interval, I said to her, Shrika, why don't you sit this side? I'll sit on the other side because I had getting this weird vibe from this girl. <laughs> So, Shika sat next to her, she just sat next to her, the girl turned to her and said, Thank you so much. <laughs> His laugh was killing me. Like, oh my God. 
And what was more embarrassing uh, was that after the movie, her mom recognized me, and this girl comes up to me and she says, "Can I have your autograph, please?" I'm like, "What?" And in the moment, I just signed the autograph and I gave it to her. And I'm like, "What am I doing?" She just she just said I was a pain in the neck to her, and then I've signed her an autograph and given it to her. But yeah, as in after that, I've been very careful about. You know, when I'm laughing and letting myself go, I'm making sure that I'm with people that I know, and you know, I'm in a safe environment. <laughs> okay, now the most important question on the show, what the duck, is your worst or best duck moment? Oh gosh, <laughs> I have a very painful one actually. <laughs> so I made my debut in 2006 in April, and uh, I scored. You know, it was a record for, for, for the highest uh, score on, by an Indian on debut. And uh, we went to pa Abu Dhabi after that. We we played Pakistan in a couple of uh, one days. I played the first one day. I got dropped in the second one day. I didn't score. I scored twelve or something in the second one day. But sec my second one day. Then we went to West Indies where I didn't play the first four matches. I was dropped from. I was not. I was not in the playing eleven. And uh, I played the. I played the last match of the tournament and I got out the first ball. To a non-regular bowler, I got out to Wavell Hines. <laughs> first ball of the match. And that easily was the worst duck of my life because I got dropped from the Indian team after that. It was extremely painful, and uh, I had to come back to domestic cricket, score 850 runs in domestic cricket to to play for India again. But I don't think any youngster who who uh, you know uh, got a start like that uh, didn't get a run. Wow! You know? so, Most expensive duck in human history. Yeah, I think you know that's something that really bites me. Um, because uh, because of that, I think I didn't get a a, a run. Um, but yeah, so that definitely is my most painful duck. <laughs> we have a gift for you. Make you happy. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. This is very this is very cool. Yeah. What is the number five? Tell me. Yeah. What is the number five all about? Mm. Is the number of ducks you scored in your life? Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that's my wife's lucky number. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. It's Fair still enough. good. Thank you very much. It's very sweet of you all. Yes. Thank you. Great to have you as well, Robin. Thank you. Cheers. One of the most important characters on the cricket field is the umpire. The most hated umpire in India was Steve Buckner, because for some strange reason, his passion was to give Tendulkar out. LBW. <laughs> Whenever Buckner was on the cricket field, you got an impression he was sleeping throughout the match and woke up only when somebody appealed. Here's Steve. <laughs> Crazy. The most dangerous umpire in the world was Rudy Kurtzson. I used to feel he was slow death. Here's Rudy. Many batsmen told me we would rather get out than face this trauma. The funniest umpire in the world was R. C. Sharma. This is what he did once. How was that? <laughs> Hope you liked the show. My favorite moment with Robin was when he told me about this funny incident that happened in a the movie theater. For more such 7-Up, hum to hai like this moments, don't forget to watch the next episode. One of the important aspects of this show is that you have to imitate people because uh, I'm boasting I can imitate around 145 cricketers, their actions. What about me? Uh, and I believe you are also... Hey, what about me? Answer that. Uh, yours is very simple, yeah. You bowl no, and... action, the other mannerisms. That you are live, no, I can't do it in front of you. But I can do your bowling style. Your bowling style had, you know, there was no arm ball pe wicket nahi milti di na. So you would have like a, a Gurudat kind of an expression. So you would bowl like this, and if you didn't get the wicket, I say, ha. So all your photographs are like that. Ha, na? Yaad hai tere ko? Ha, sab yaad hai. Arm ball ke waise bhi nahi milti di.